Hi, I'm Glenn and welcome to another Glenn Prince Tech video. A couple months ago, I did a video about a pyramid scheme called the Blessing Loom. The sole purpose of this video was to sensitize people about the dangers of such a scheme as there were many people who had never heard of it. If you haven't seen the video in question, I will link it at the end of this video. I received a lot of messages and calls from friends who either thanked me for bringing this to light or told me I didn't understand how it worked. Therefore, my video wasn't a good representation of the blessing loop. I must say that everyone shared their views respectfully. Those who told me I didn't understand it gave me a few reasons why the blessing loom is a viable and legit way for everyone to make money. There were also many people who told me they were still confused because they were told if they reinvested into the scheme, it will continue forever. In this video, I will attempt to bring clarity to this situation. Claim number one. Investing in the blessing loom is the same as investing in the stock market. First of all, when someone invests in the stock market, they do so based on projections. That person will monitor how well the company is currently doing and how well they are expected to do in the future before deciding whether or not it is worth investing their money into that company. With the blessing loom, there is no product or service, which means you rely solely on recruits. This is a business model which is doomed from the very beginning since the number of potential recruits is limited. A traditional company on the other hand can simply manufacture more products. Another thing is that when people invest in a company's stock, the risk and reward is the same for everyone. The only difference is the amount of money they stand to lose or win as some people will invest more money than others but the percentage remains the same for everyone. For example, Person A invested $1,000 in a company stock, while Person B invested $10,000 in that same company. From their investment, Person A earned $5,000, while Person B got $50,000. Although the figures are different, they both got 500% return on their investment. With the blessing loom, 12% of those involved are guaranteed to get 800% return on their investment, while the other 88% will lose everything. Claim number two. The blessing loom is the same as a susu or sub, and our parents and grandparents have been doing this for years without any issues. A traditional sub or susu is totally different from the blessing loom. In a susu, a fixed number of people are in a group. The basic principle behind the susu is that each member of the group makes a standard contribution once per time period, usually once a week. Normally, there is one person in charge of collecting all the money, although in recent times, PayPal and Cash App have been used to send money directly to recipients. At the end of each time period, the total contributions are given to one person in the group. This happens after each time period until every member in the group eventually gets paid. A member who receives money early on is effectively receiving a loan. That person will continue to pay until they repay the initial amount that they received. A member who receives money towards the end of the rotation has essentially been saving their money. Traditionally, when members get their money, they would give the organizer a small percentage of that money as a thank you for operating the SUSU. A SUSU is not a written or legal contract so it is highly dependent on personal trust. Because of this, it is recommended that participants are either members of the same community or people who know each other very well. Claim number three. If you reinvest into the scheme, it will go on forever. Picture the blessing loom as a race where every runner brings a bottle of water to enter the race. Before the race begins, each runner places their bottle in a cooler and is told that he or she will get 8 bottles once they complete the race. 104 runners start the race. While the race is going on, the organizer takes 8 bottles even though he or she didn't contribute anything. This leaves 96 bottles in the cooler. The race winner is then awarded 8 bottles of water. 2nd through 10th place also get 8 bottles each. By now, there are only 16 bottles left in the cooler but there are still 94 runners yet to finish the race, all of whom were promised 8 bottles upon completing the race. After the 11th and 12th place finishers take 8 bottles each, the cooler is empty. 92 people are left with nothing. The only way they can get 8 bottles each 
is if more people register for the race as runners are required to bring a bottle of water. But wait, it is said that if those who already won reinvested into the scheme, everyone will be able to get what was promised to them and the scheme will continue. So let's test out this theory. 104 bottles of water were in the cooler, yet it only took 13 people to empty it. If each person puts back one bottle from what they took, the cooler will now have 13 bottles. When the next person gets the 8 bottles, there will be a remainder of 5. So at the end of it all, a total of 91 people would walk away empty-handed. So by reinvesting into the scheme, the number of losers went from 92 to 91. A change, but a very insignificant one which isn't enough to keep the scheme going. I hope I was able to explain this in a way that everyone understood. I am thankful for your continued support and look forward to bringing you more videos. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.